Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting green to episode 20 of Undead Unlocks. Let's go get started in 3, 2, 1, go. Well, that doesn't sound good. Damn, that's a big ass bug. Oh God, the CG. Ah! Yeah, I mean, she also just took homegirl's phone, but it's okay. She can get another one. But the fact is, Arnold can see into the freaking future. That changes everything. We just saw Fugu, like, literally get killed. What the fuck was that? We're not even going to talk about that because she's the only one who knows. And her CGI spiders. Yeah.
So, where are they? Because we all know Canada is not like that. <laughs> not in no fucking December. <laughs> hmm? Ah. Mm-hmm. Well, both y'all are getting distracted because, you know, they're coming from behind. And they already took the manuscript. No! Yeah. <laughs> they can't take her seriously. Oh my God. How did you get over there so quickly? Well, I mean, yeah, what did you think it was going to be, Foucault? Look at the fact it's like it, everywhere over here is literally autumn, leaves falling in it.
whatever the heck she's cooking it got in my eye oh my god I don't know if it's onions Oh my god! What are they gonna do? Did it just get bigger? And it turns into a, a fucking spider. Oh my god. She was right, though. Everything's coming to fruition. I don't want to see this. She just cut off her own arm? And, and there's no way in hell she's getting her arm back. Well, unless she draws it back, but still.
She's such a fucking jokester. I can't take her seriously. <laughs> well, dang. No comment. <laughs> right and then plus that vision of Fuko dying How are we going to do that? Oh, my God. And you expect her to read all that? Okay, Andy has to have, like, the most biggest, maybe tragic course, the, like, long is story out of maybe any character in anime because, like, bruh, his way all the way out of the stratosphere into space. What the hell is this show for you? What is that? <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. We okay, we knew the fight against uh, Autumn was not going to be easy, but <laughs> This really takes the cake. 
I was, I, I mean, that just took me out. Like, bruh. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my God. Okay, that was something. That's all I gotta say. That was, I think, something. But, of course, this is all for a reason, just, you know, to defeat Autumn. Um, as I said last night in my Twitter post, or my ex post, whatever, I don't give a shit. Um, I don't mind the CGI. It, it's just, it's there. Because, like, I was, I had just finished doing the podcast with the guys, and I go on freaking X, and then I, the first thing I see is that post. And CGI. Now, mind you, we've, we've had the conversation numerous. Numerous of numerous of numerous times. And CGI, depending on what it is, yes, it can definitely make or break a show. We've seen that time and time again. Um... I just, I think, especially with this show, I was not expecting CGI with it. Number one, I did not think they were going to go into it. Because, I mean, the the company that is, because you, you, let me look that up real quick. Because I think it is David's production. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so animation is David's David production, and then the produ uh, the production and planning is TMS Entertainment. So maybe TMS on their part was literally like, okay, hey, you get you get all this work and budget, you can do whatever the heck you want, just as much as you do with JoJo and such, but you need one episode with CGI, and, and today was the episode. But, it, like I said, it's, like, it's not the worst piece of CGI I've seen. I have seen worse. Sailor Moon Crystal in a nutshell, as I said in that post. Sailor Moon Crystal's CGI was a, a shit show. It really, truly was. And as someone who is one of many of the biggest fans of Sailor Moon, I can still say that. We, the, the thing on, like, with Toei in that situation on why they did it, I get it, because, you know, budget cuts and everything, and then, you know, you're only getting a certain amount and this is then the third. Plus, you're celebrating the anniversary for that series and such. They're like, yeah, why don't we just go? I mean, there have been times where, yes, Toei has done good. Go Princess Pretty Cure had CGI, and then it wasn't... Ha yeah, Happiness Charge also had CGI attacks with a little bit of transformation in there as well. And now Toei is about to do a full CGI anime with girls going doing a band together and such. And so that does tell you that, you know, despite the criticism that they got with that ish and, you know, how people were like, this isn't good, this sucks, you need to change X, Y, and Z. And they took that initiative, went back to the 2D route for Sailor Moon Crystal, and now they took everything, you know, everybody said about them and how it looked, and they were like, okay, let's make this a little bit better. Now, I mean, mind you, the new anime for that series is not really starting until, like, springtime of this year. As I said, it kind of looks like a, um, a crossover between a PS2 and a PS3 game, but it still looks good. It holds up for its time, unlike other shows that I have seen. But I will still say, like, for top CGI, it is season two to the end of the series of Bandari, plus season one and season two of D4DJ. That's really, like, top tier. And then plus you have, you know, Orange, especially with Beastars and Trigun in a nutshell. But, dang, like, did you really have to do CGI? Did you really? But I get it. It's just budget cuts and then, you know, everything. I mean, that's the same thing a lot of people had an issue with, with, you know, the last couple of seasons of Attack on Titan in a nutshell, parts one, two, three, and how they had to go that route and people were, like, strongly advised about that. But it's just, it's there. It's not going to, you know, hinder my, like, watching experience being like oh okay it's here i don't really want to watch this episode and stuff it's just there we have to deal with it and such and it's okay like i said not the worst definitely not far with the worst but it's not the best at the same time though but 
it was still a damn good episode. I'm just wondering what the freak is going to happen next because for oh my god. But uh, no, it seems like we're going to get like the biggest backstory on Andy, which is uh, I'm happy about because it's something that I've been wanting ever since the beginning of this show because episode one is hugely focused on Fuko. And now we're finally, especially with the fact is I think we only have at least four more weeks with this show before we're done. We're finally getting something on Andy, despite the fact that we are so close to the end of this show. But hey, it's okay. Other than that, guys, that is my action view towards episode 20 of Undead Unluck. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day each with Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially next Friday and Saturday for episode 21. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.